right, let's go ahead and council members, if you can come back in and have a seat, we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you everybody for coming tonight and um, to find out exactly why we're here before we get started, I acknowledge um, Mr. Rich Rieblin. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, what I'd like to do is just make a few general comments about uh, why we're here tonight and then turn it over to uh, the MLS to Nashville team to sort of walk you through uh, their presentation. Um, I think uh, very simply, um, we think that an opportunity to bring an MLS team to Nashville is very important for our community. Uh, we think we have uh, a unique opportunity uh, to potentially make this happen over the next several months. Uh, and we wanted to start this journey uh, tonight with the council so that the council could see before the general public sees it, before it's in the newspapers, sort of some of the concepts behind uh, locating a, uh, an MLS stadium uh, at the fairgrounds. Um, while we are committed to trying to make this venture work, uh, let me say that at the outset that we have um, a lot of more work to do and there are a lot of things that you're going to have questions about that we don't have the answers for yet today. Uh, but we felt it was important to get you engaged into the conversation sooner rather than later uh, so that you could get a good feel for this, develop, start developing your own questions uh, before we came back to the council with uh, a definitive proposal. Uh, as you know, the mayor has said on several occasions that she believes uh, that if we do a soccer facility in Nashville, uh, the fairgrounds is the right location for it. Uh, and I say that also adding that that doesn't mean we're doing away with um, a lot of the facilities at the fairgrounds. The racetrack remains. Uh, the new park that will be built would stay, in, would stay in, involved. Uh, what it would mean is a new a facility at the fairgrounds along with a new and renovated fairgrounds, uh, which we believe would be a great asset for our community going forward. Uh, so with that background, what I'd like to do is turn it over to Will, Will Alexander, who is the co-chair of MLS to Nashville, to sort of start the presentation. And then each of the other speakers will introduce themselves uh, as they go on down the, uh, through the presentation. And then I have a couple closing uh, comments on sort of next steps and process going forward. So with that, Will, thank you. Thank you very much, Rich. Thank you, uh, Mr. Vice Mayor, and thank you to all the council members that are here, and, and thank you to all the soccer supporters that are uh, spending some of your evening here tonight, uh, too. This is an exciting time for Nashville, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to talk about all the work that's been done on the uh, MLS bid so far and, uh, and what, what lies ahead. The... Uh, what I'd like to start out with is, uh, is to give everybody a brief overview of what the MLS to Nashville Committee is. That's the group that I represent. The uh, MLS to Nashville Committee is, a, uh, is an organization made up of about 160 business, civic, and uh, community leaders, some sports leaders too, from the, uh, from the Nashville area that had the common goal of bringing a, uh, an, a major league soccer team to Nashville. Eddie George and Lily Aldridge are the honorary co-chairs, but most of the members of the committee are not, uh, are not household names. I think one thing that's really important about the MLS bid is that it began as a, uh, as a community effort. And one reason why it's come so far so fast is due to the prominent role that the, committee, that the community has played in the, uh, in the bid so far. Now, soccer. In, uh, soccer is the most popular game in the, in the world by a big margin. Over three billion people watch the World Cup around the world. One fifth of all people in the world are soccer players. And soccer is not just popular abroad. It's, uh, it's hugely popular in the United States as well. There are 113 million uh, American soccer fans. And both the men's and women's, the most recent World Cups, had more viewers tuning in than the NBA Finals and the World Series. Now, the other thing about soccer, too, is the soccer fan base is very young. And because of that, a lot of people call it the sport of the future. You can see soccer is the number two sport amongst uh, 12 to 24-year-olds. And soccer is also very popular about some of the fastest, among some of the fastest growing demographic groups in, uh, in the U.S. Now, the next question is, 
Do Nashvillians like soccer? And the answer is absolutely yes. The headline number here is just in July, we had two big international soccer games in Nashville that attracted together more than 100,000 people. We had the USA against Panama, and we had an English Premier League exhibition game. There are approximately 40,000 youth soccer players in, uh, in the Nashville area, and uh, participation in high school soccer has been rising at a steady clip. The MLS is, uh, is aware of the high level of interest in soccer in Nashville, and that's one of the reasons why they're, they're very interested in this market. Now on to uh, Major League Soccer. The MLS was founded in 1996, and today it's stronger than it's, uh, than it's ever been. The league is, uh, season runs from March to October, and attendance now in the MLS ranks number three amongst all U.S. sports leagues at about 22,000 uh, spectators a game. That's only behind the NFL and Major League Baseball. Just like the sport of soccer in general, more than half of MLS fans are, are, young, are the younger bracket, 18 to 34 here, meaning the league is poised to continue growing. You can watch MLS games on a weekly basis on national television. <clears throat> Here's the MLS footprint today. There are 24 teams. You can see a big void in the, uh, the Mid-South area. Actually, if Nashville were awarded an MLS team, it'd be the closest MLS team for almost 13 million people in parts of nine states. You know, another interesting thing about the map is the most successful MLS team attendance-wise right now is Atlanta. They're averaging almost 46,000 people a game. The MLS is excited about the, the potential for growth in the South, and uh, Nashville is in a, in a great position for them there. So now on to MLS expansion. Right now, the league is at 24. They're planning to go to 28 teams. 12 cities have applied for the four open spots. Two teams will be awarded in uh, the end of this year, in December. Two additional teams in 2018. These new teams will start playing in 2020 to 2022. Now, really an, an important aspect of the expansion round is the MLS has said this will be the last one. The league's going to go to 28, and it's going to stop, meaning the window for Nashville to get a Major League Soccer team is, uh, is now. The league's been very clear about their criteria, about what they look for in, a, uh, in an expansion group. It's the right ownership. It's the stadium plan they're comfortable with, the location and the design of the stadium, and it's the right market, which is fans, sponsors, and, and what kind of a fit would this team have in the, uh, in the proposed city. Here's our competition. 12, uh, 12 other cities have some bids. You can see some are, are some of the large cities, some with great sports traditions, but we feel very comfortable about where we currently are. Now, Nashville's in a very strong position to land an MLS expansion team. Quickly want to go through some of our strengths. An engaged community. We, uh, it took the Commissioner Don Garber only a couple hours to be here to see the collaborative spirit of Nashville, to see the energy, the passion about soccer here. And uh, that's, a real, that's a real asset for us. Nashville is a can-do city. We work well together. We, uh, we, we aim to do uh, big things. Our demographics are great for soccer. We're a fast-growing city. We're a very diverse city. Our strong economy, we've got great job growth, one of the lo lowest unemployment rates in the country, great attendance at major soccer matches. We talked about those two games this summer, uh, great momentum for Nashville SC and what they're going to be able to do when they start playing at the USL level next spring. Uh, outstanding support for our teams that we already have. Think about the Predators. They were the story of the NHL this season. The Titans sold out 100 straight games plus when they moved over to, when they moved to Nissan Stadium, and the Sounds last time I looked were leading their division in attendance. Nashville's got a unique asset that that uh, that other cities don't have is that we're an entertainment capital. We've got a global brand. The MLS can gain a lot by associating with a uh, with a city that's got visibility around the world like Nashville does. And finally, Nashville has a great base of uh, of companies that are headquartered here, especially for a city our size. We've got a lot of, uh, of potential sponsors, and the business community is excited about the MLS bid. Here are just some quotes by, uh, that you can read by Commissioner Don Garber. Some are from when he was, when he was here, and, and some are from around the All-Star break. As you can tell, he's very high on Nashville, a lot of praise for Nashville. He was impressed with what he saw, both in uh, both of the potential for Nashville as an MLS market, and then just how he saw that, that Nashville works and the community uh, works together. But he does point out, that an important part of, uh, of every MLS bid that they evaluate is our, uh, is, is our stadium plan. And with this, I'd like to turn it over to, uh, to John Ingram. John will be the lead 
investor in Nashville's MLS team. If our city is awarded a, uh, a franchise, there's no better person in the world to, uh, to play this role. And we're thankful for John stepping up and, uh, and doing this. John is passionate about uh, soccer, and more importantly, he's passionate about Nashville. And uh, I'm pleased to present John Ingram. Thank you, thank you very much, Will. It's it's an honor to be here, and I'm sorry I'm somewhat blocked uh, by by um, um, some of the the technology here. But it is it is a true honor to be here to to talk about what I what I believe is a real win win opportunity um, here, and that is for um, for the city and and our effort to to partner to to um, bring an MLS team to Nashville and. Um, Nashville has been home to, to me and, and, and my family for a long, long time. Uh, my grandparents, my father's parents moved, moved down here from St. Paul in the, in the late 30s. I, I think there was a, one particularly cold winter and my grandfather told my grandmother that the only thing fit to live in St. Paul in the winter was a polar bear and he wasn't one of those. And so um, they moved down to Nashville um, where, where they'd made an investment in a textile business. And, and, and it's, been, it's been our home base ever since. My vision is really to work uh, with the city to do the next big thing for the city. And, and that to me is really marrying the, the, the global sport of soccer with a globally branded city, which is, which is our city of Nashville. Um, ownership, is, as Will mentioned, is important to, to MLS. I mean, it's not the only criteria. There, there are other criteria, but, but MLS really cares about, they want to have not only ownership that, that has the financial means to, to both pay a hefty expansion fee and startup expenses and potentially losses as, as a team kind of gets its, its, its uh, feet under it. But, um, but also, they're looking for people with deep roots and, and a commitment um, to, the, to the real fabric of the city. And, and um, I'd like to, like to say that I think um, that, that I'm um, mostly what they're looking for. I mean, Nashville is my home, and, and I don't plan to, to, to go anywhere. I want to be right here. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, I believe this is a great opportunity for Nashville. Um, for our current citizens, as Will mentioned, uh, the great reception for the two most recent games that were here. Um, I, I think for economic development around the WeHo area, I think this would be a great catalyst for that. I think it will boost um, and be a great amenity for t uh, tourism, domestic and international. And, and I think there, there are a lot of other, um, um, <clears throat> other benefits that will accrue over time. Ultimately, I would like to do this in Nashville. I'd like to do it for Nashville, and I'd like to do it with Nashville. Um, and uh, certainly hope uh, that we have a chance uh, to make that come true. With respect to the actual stadium itself, um, my hope has always been that we that we build a dual use type of facility, a uh, facility that was capable of, of hosting uh, both MLS soccer and potentially NCAA football. Um, while it's while I think they're still in the exploratory stage, uh, David Williams, <coughs> vice chancellor and athletic director sitting, sitting next to me is here to shed just a, a little bit of light on Vanderbilt's uh, potential interest in this project. David, you may, that might be live. Thank you, John, and thank you for having me today. Uh, Vanderbilt has been a part of this community for almost 150 years. And 150 years from now, Vanderbilt will still be here. We're a proud part of the Nashville community. We love Nashville, and we want to do things that help make this outstanding city even better. We believe strongly that bringing Major League Soccer to Nashville will enhance and bring more excitement to already a great city. <clears throat> We've been following closely the conversations between the ownership group in the city on the plans of a new stadium. And as that vision progresses, we will be very interested in exploring with the ownership group the possibilities of playing some football and soccer games at that new stadium. At Vanderbilt, we regularly assess new opportunities, and we'll do the same with this. And if we think it emerges that this progress, this vision provides an opportunity for our team, our fans, and our community, we are very, very open to exploring that possibility. Thank you, and thank you, John. David, thank you, thank you very much. Um, 
Next, I would, I would like to introduce a woman sitting next to, to David, who is um, Mary Cavaro, who, who is not only the CFO of, of Ingram Ministries, and I'll just tell you, she does a wonderful job of that, but she has also really been the, the project lead of, of, of this whole project and, and has worked uh, uh, tirelessly with some of our consultants and, and kept the city informed um, uh, the, the mayor's office, I should say, informed on kind of our progress in trying to put together a preliminary plan for the stadium. And Mary, with that, would you take, it, take it from there? Thank you, John. You're way too kind. Um, as, as we heard from John and Will, we've checked the box on two of the league's requirement, ownership and market. And so now our task is to complete the stadium work. When Commissioner Garber was in Nashville a couple weeks ago, excuse me, Sorry about that. When Commissioner Garber was in Nashville a few weeks ago, he indicated that we must secure financing for a soccer-specific stadium. And in fact, he made it very clear that no city would be approved without a stadium plan intact. And so the league believes that a soccer-specific stadium is important for several reasons. First of all, that a stadium designed for soccer will have the correct field dimensions, which will make it safer for players and others to be there. In addition, professional sports team, just like a regular business, need to have some viable stream of revenue in order to have a long-term prospects of operating. And thirdly, just like our Predators fans were able to enjoy Bridgestone Arena, soccer fans want an authentic experience. Now a stadium is gonna be, can be used far beyond just for the soccer fans. And as others have mentioned, you know, Nashville can, ben can benefit from collegiate and youth events as well as other community and entertainment events and activities that could be held at the site. As an ownership team, we recognized early on that we just don't have any, didn't have any experience in building a stadium. So we went and hired some experts. And we've been working with uh, Icon Venue Group. They're based in Denver. They've helped lead our efforts. They serve as an owner's representative and have extensive experience in this area. And in fact, they've worked with 11 of the MLS teams and four of the expansion bid cities. We've been diligently working on a stadium over the past several months, and tonight will be the first public presentation for vision of what the stadium is, and you'll get to see that shortly. As a CFO, one of the questions I would ask at this stage is, well, what's it gonna cost? And <coughs> we're just not quite there yet. That several, but to give you a perspective, several MLS teams have recently constructed soccer-specific stadiums over the past couple of years. For example, in Orlando, it was approximately 160 million, ranging to over 350 million in Los Angeles. <coughs> and as I'm sure you can appreciate, that each stadium is gonna be unique and the costs are gonna be dependent upon the location, the size, the design, and many other variables. We've spent a lot of time working on estimated stadium cost and we continue to work on this part of the plan and we expect to have the details soon. We'll also continue to work with the mayor and her team to, to determine the public-private partnership details and we'll come back to you in about 30 to 45 days. And as Rich mentioned, and as you recall, back in January, the mayor had indicated uh, or identified Nashville Fairgrounds as a site for major league, a major league soccer stadium. The preliminary stadium site plan that you'll see shortly will show that the stadium is located on the elevated portion of the fairgrounds west of the speedway. The plans incorporate the fairgrounds current programming. And so I'd now like to introduce Ron Sally. Ron is a senior vice president with Icon Venue Group. He has more than 25 years of public and private company experience in the areas of sports and entertainment, business operations, new ventures, and legal matters. Thank you very much, Mary. Got a little ahead of myself there. Um, the first slide we're gonna look at is um, the stadium site plan uh, that you can see on the screen. And as Mary mentioned, uh, our firm has worked on quite a few uh, soccer projects here in North America. Uh, but this particular site, and we've seen a lot of sites, we've seen plenty of sites that haven't been utilized and obviously the ones that have come to fruition. Um, but this is a really great, great site that you have here in Nashville. One of the things that uh, we're always cognizant of at this stage of the process, and particularly when we're thinking several years ahead of when 
a project may actually be built is to ensure that we're being proactive and thinking about the future. Um, and as you can see here on this rendering, one of the things that can be noted uh, that we always are cognizant of is how fans get to the stadium and how they leave the stadium. We are already in, as part of the design process, incorporating into probably the single biggest change that we've seen in our, seen in our business from a transportation perspective, and that's ride sharing. Um, and so we've got two designated spots already uh, for that that have been incorporated. We're also looking at having, um, and one of the major things in, in soccer is tradition, that's set around the supporters of the, of the team. And as you can see in the, uh, the green uh, line there, there's what we've characterized as a supporters march, which is a pathway that can be utilized in a pregame processional for the rabbit supporters of the soccer team. Uh, and there's no better time than uh, year one to start with tremendous and great tradition. So that's also something that's, that's part of the design. And I would say most importantly, we're excited about the stadium being an integral part of the fairgrounds development, which based on the things that have been shared with us sounds fantastic. Um, and then also incorporating it into the rapidly growing Wedgwood neighborhood that surrounds the stadium is gonna be very exciting too. One of the things that we were told when we were first engaged was uh, really two things about the stadium. Um, Mary and John couldn't have been more clear with the fact that they wanted a dual purpose stadium that was highly functional. They wanted a stadium that was gonna deliver a tremendous fan experience because of its functionality. So we have focused on that in the, in the design. The other component is the facade uh, and also the aesthetic design. And this is of critical importance because you don't want a project and we were directed specifically on this. We don't want a project that's kind of just placed into any particular place, and particularly in this particular site, but it's something that needed to be fully integrated into its surroundings. And so the design is developing, and the objective is for it to be authentically Nashville. Uh, there may be more than one team that plays here in the stadium, but the stadium is going to personify what Nashville is really all about. And that's one of our focus with this particular slide. This is a view looking back towards downtown. So it's a view from the southeast. And you can see downtown there to the north. Vanderbilt is a little bit to the uh, northwest, if you will. Um, but this is a great slide to show you the dynamic nature um, of the project. As you can see there, we have several of the existing fairgrounds buildings also uh, represented here in this slide. The next slide is the main entrance um, to the stadium. And this is really the front door to the project that includes the, the welcome mat, which we'll call the plaza that's right in front of it. And from a design perspective, we're really excited about uh, what's been represented here too. As you can see, you can see from the plaza all the way down to the pitch, which is something that is fairly unique from a stadium perspective. You have an opening, uh, an opening there that's very inviting and visually very appealing. The public space that is right in front of the, the main entrance is a great public plaza that can be used for an array of different pre-game and post-game um, events. So whether those are pep rallies or whether those are post-game celebrations. Also on non-game days, this can be a great public get gathering spot also. This is a uh, shot of what um, not only the lower bowl can look like, but probably more importantly feel like uh, on game day. This is facing south, and you can see the scoreboard there in the distance. Our focus here is to make this not only fan friendly, but as, in, as uh, intimidating as possible to the opponent. Uh, the lower bowl as large as possible with as many fans um, that you guys want to have there and to have tremendous sight lines that are soccer specific. So again, this goes back to the functionality comment that I made earlier. We want to ensure that there is a tremendous soccer experience here in the stadium. The next two things I'm going to talk about are uh, two of the soccer specific 
components of the stadium that we've been considering. Uh, and I'm only going to talk about two. We've got a large menu of kind of soccer-specific components. But for tonight, because we have limited time, I'll only, I'll only talk about two. The first one is a standing fan area. So as you guys are probably looking at the screen wondering, that's definitely not Nashville, and you're right. It's not. Um, but we're showing this to be representative of what this, what this area can be in the stadium. This will be an area that arguably may be the most popular area uh, in your stadium. It's uh, standing room uh, or standing only, has a drink rail, and this is where your most passionate and let's just say outspoken fans may be <laughs> placed during the, during the game. But we're really excited about this space. Uh, it has tremendous, tremendous potential. As you can see, you can bring in your uh, banners, flags, everything else that you have to cheer for, to cheer for your local team. This slide is um, what we're calling the corner kick terrace, uh, which will be two that are currently in the design. Um, and this is really, really a compelling and cool seating area um, that has a tremendous vantage point to one of the most exciting plays in soccer, which is a corner kick. Um, this will accommodate about 100 fans in each section and will be supported by food and beverage uh, behind it. Thank you, Ron. Now, before I turn it back over to Rich, the other item I wanted to mention is that we'll be reaching out to the neighbors and other groups as we um, and get some meetings scheduled so that we can share the information with them that we've shared with you tonight and also solicit their feedback as we continue to move through the process. And Rich? Thank you all for the presentation. And let me, what I'd like to do is before, um, Vice Mayor, I'm sure they'll be willing to take some questions at the end. Before I do it over there, let me, I'd like to give just a couple more uh, sort of parameters and sort of uh, some insight as to kind of what comes next in this process. Um, as, as you heard, um, we really believe that we have a unique opportunity to get an MLS franchise. Frankly, I think far sooner than what um, we envisioned when we started on this journey a few uh, few months ago. Uh, but to do that, we're going to have to do, uh, we're going to have to get a financing plan in place and approved by um, several bodies, um, including the council, um, to give the league uh, the confidence level that we, we have got a deal approved. Um, so as part of this process, obviously the fair board will have to sign off on it, as will the sports authority. Uh, as we would envision, like we have other sports, other venues in town, the sports authority being the uh, the actual owner and the issuer of, of any debt that is done on the project. Um, and so over the next 30 to 45 days, um, we will continue to meet and work on the details of what that may look like. Um, let me say that it is clearly going to be what I would call a private-public partnership. Uh, this project uh, while we think it is very important to the city and just a, a next great step for our city, um, uh, has got to uh, minimize the impact uh, to the taxpayers. We're not, we know that going into this, and that's one of the parameters we're going to use and we've been using in our discussions. Um, so it will be uh, clearly, a, as I said, a private-public partnership. Um, we would envision that it would also include uh, more detail for you on the renovation and improvements to the fairgrounds. Uh, as you know, this administration uh, has already taken steps towards, uh, um, really for the first time in many decades, uh, putting public dollars into renovating the fairgrounds. We have the new fair, fair, uh, soccer park, fair, the park that will start construction shortly, as well as um, the first $12 million or I believe it was of, of, of bond funds for this uh, for the fairground renovation. Um, so anything we do will include uh, significant funds to continue that improvements to the fairgrounds. Um, uh, so um, there'll be at least two other bodies besides the council that will have to sign off on this. Uh, it is critical uh, that we do this uh, in a timely manner, which is why we wanted to start this conversation today. Uh, we would expect uh, that whatever legislation that needs to be brought to the council will be coming in the October-ish time frame. 
uh, so that uh, action could be done in October, worst case scenario, early November, so that the league has time to review the plan prior to making its decision in early December. Um, what else did I want to say? Let's Um, so, to do this, we're obviously going to record over the next 30 to 45 days, uh, but we'll have more discussions uh, with you um, as we get forward to it in the in the uh, in the uh, in November October and November timeframe. Um, a couple final comments. I know there many of you will be asking this question about how we're going to protect ourselves on cost. And that is something that will be presented to you when we come with the final plan so that you have assurances that what you approve will be the maximum amount of cost on the project. And if there are additional costs, uh, it will not come from the taxpayers. Uh, and obviously, there will be a major commitment, as we heard earlier today on other meetings, uh, to DBE work and minority participation in this project, as we do on all city projects going forward. Um, we think this is, uh, we have a window of opportunity to do something that is really good for the city going forward, uh, and we appreciate you being here today uh, and, and your involvement in this over the next uh, over the next several weeks and months ahead. And with that, uh, Vice Mayor, um, obviously with any questions that anyone may have. Thank you, Mr. Reveling. It is about 8.12, according to my uh, clock here. I'm willing to stay as long as 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 uh, anyone wants to stay, but I would encourage you to avoid the speech and skip right to the question. Um, and uh, not that you, not that anyone here would give a speech. I've never heard a speech. <laughs> but let's let's go to the questions first. Councilman Anthony Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I will cut out the grandstanding then that I was thinking about doing. Uh, thank you guys for coming early in this process. I do want to say that brief comment as well. I know um, it's not fully baked and everything, and that's that's actually really great. We want you to come early, so I'm really appreciative of that. Um, overall, just very excited about this possibility um, and the sports town Nashville's becoming. Quickly, I'll ask, um, there was that article going around, so I at least wanted to let you guys comment on the, the, the story that was going around. They were calling the MLS a Ponzi scheme or whatever. I just at least wanted to let you, if you had any comments about that, um, just, it was mainly about the MLS's expansion and rapid expansion. Um, and I just figure, you know, you guys would have an opinion and uh, any comments, if you read the article um, that came out recently just about the rapid expansion. But again, I preface that with, I'm very excited about the potential I think MLS would be amazing here, um, but just any comments about that that article that was recently going around about expansion and rapid expansion? Um, I, I haven't read the article. Um, I sure as heck hope it's not a Ponzi scheme. Um, and uh, uh, but uh, in all in all in all seriousness, I think the rapid expansion is is a realization. Of, of we've kind of hit a tipping point in this country um, where where soccer is 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 really um, on fire in, in most parts of the country and and I I think the fact that there are 12 cities that submitted bids for for four spots shows you that um, that I, I, I that it's not a Ponzi scheme it's it's really I think a reflection of of you know some of the demographic changes and thing changes that are happening in, in this country that are positive for for soccer. Sure. Yeah, it was definitely hyperbole, and I think their their point was some of the lower revenue markets or something aren't doing as well. I guess that was their point. Um, so anyway, thank you for that. And again, I'm super positive on this. Look forward to seeing Rich's uh, package. And um, you mentioned DBE and minority business. I did want to comment. You know, we definitely want to know uh, about the labor. Uh, agreements as well. So financial, your financial, whatever you're bringing us, booklet. So thank you, Rich. Council Lady Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, thank you for the MLS2 team for the great presentation. Uh, you know, I'm not big on sports, so I'm not as excited as, you know, Councilman Davis, but I think it's a great opportunity. I, I totally agree with that. Uh, you know, uh, Looking at the recent Predators' success, and 
even mayor back then had little reservation, but now she's a big fan. So I'm uh, you know, hopeful this project will turn into uh, that kind of uh, one with a lifetime opportunity. Just a quick question is, I think earlier uh, the stadium location, I think by the river, uh, was entertained, but seems like now it's in a determined to fairground. Could you tell me that how it was determined and uh, decided? Let me let me start on that, and then and then I think we may let the the team. I think they they like that location. I think that from a city perspective, we felt that this was. Um, you know, the, as I said earlier, we've made the first investment in the fairgrounds financially that's been done in several years, and we see this as a continued investment. Uh, it is a great piece of city property that we want to see utilized to benefit all of Nashville, uh, both represent, uh, you know, recognizing the historical mm -hmm. aspects there as well as, as well as where it could go to in the future. Um, we also felt that uh, from a location standpoint, it just really worked very well. Um, it, it, we, you know, it's downtown, but not exactly downtown. It's close to downtown, but not downtown. And, and you know, we, 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 we think it's important to spread some of that, some of that development opportunity to other parts of the city. Uh, it's also very conveniently located uh, with great access to interstates. Uh, and so from a, from, from a fan perspective, it's easy to get to. It's a recognizable area, and, and I think will lead to a catalyst of an already uh, growing area, but, but really just be um, really uh, important for the city, from a city perspective, to make an investment uh, in that location rather than, um, you know, uh, than right downtown. I think it's really important. I might also mention that MLS cares deeply about being as close to downtown and in the urban core as possible. That really matters to them. They they really are not looking to do stadiums that are in, you know, out in the suburbs. I mean, the, the fairgrounds is maybe a mile outside of what you might call the, the, the downtown urban core. And, the, you know, MLS looked at it and they, they thought it was both close enough and, and with the expansion coming that direction and uh, that, that, that this was quite suitable to them. Thank you so much, and I would look forward to great uh, private public partnerships so you know our taxpayer will not have so much damage. Thank you. Councilman Bednick. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, <clears throat> We will so, not commit that the Argentine national team will play here, Fabi, and we will not commit that. <laughs> come on. I mean, at least get Messi to come to nice. <laughs> Um So uh, having been that my first question was answered, uh, so the next question will be, um, first of all, if you can talk about the difference between why can't we just play soccer at the Titan Stadium, for example? This is a... Uh, why do we need a specific stadium f to play soccer? Uh, and then a comment. I'm glad that uh, that you are uh, proposing to uh, work with the community. I had opposed the prior project at the fairgrounds when they were trying to redevelop it because I thought that it didn't have to be an either or project. Uh, I think this is a project that will work with the existing uses in the fairgrounds and the the speedway and add another um, thing in that facility. So I, I will be curious to see how the engagement with the neighbors and with the community and with the stakeholders works. But if you could talk about the difference, uh, I appreciate it. Sure. The the the, um, the reason that uh, Nissan Stadium wouldn't work as a as a permanent solution is that MLS has a strong bias. Uh, away from playing in in the super large football uh, American football stadiums. I mean, the average crowd uh, is probably more than what is it, the 20, 22,000 people. And if you're in a 70,000 seat stadium, it looks very barren and 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 empty. Um, and so it's just not something that they find acceptable. And um, um, so it was. It's not our not our choice. Uh, we might have had a different perspective, but it's 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 uh, their their decision. 
Councilman Elrod. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, I will make just, I guess, one statement because it goes back to a question Councilman Davis has um, about the uh, article from Deadspin about the Ponzi scheme, I guess, allegations. And I only uh, mention that because particularly since it appears this will be a public stadium, I think those are questions that need to be answered um, because if we're going to be investing public dollars into a, a um, that will be hosting private events, we need to make sure that those are going to be a good use of dollars and that private use um, will be there for a while. So um, you may or may not have read the article, I understand, but at least some of those uh, questions that are raised in the article, um, I would need uh, addressed before I were to uh, vote on a stadium proposal. Um, in the Tennessee article that was released just a little bit ago, uh, Mr. Ingram, you're quoted as um, that the stadium will, that a lot of it, quote, a lot of it will depend on ultimately what we can gain approval from the city. What exactly um, in the talks that you're, are you asking for approval from the city for? I think in general, as we finish the, the, our preliminary plans and, and get feedback from both the council and the neighbors, we'll have a better sense of, of what the totality of the, of the plan is and be able to come, come back here with, with something that's more definitive. I, just, I, I was just representing that, that we understand that there's a process um, and that, that we need the fair board's approval, we need the, 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 the council's approval um, uh, before we could move forward, that was really. That's fine. Point. I, I was just, I was just curious. I, I wasn't a, I wasn't trying to have a gotcha question. I was just generally curious because what. And then um, I guess as a somewhat of a follow up, um, you know, I'll be candid here. There are two billionaires that are on the uh, stadium ownership proposed team. Um, what is the uh, I guess the ownership's team's uh, I guess anticipated. Uh, skin in the game as far as the stadium financing. I know there's the $150 million uh, expansion fee, um, but with a leadership team with deep pockets like that, um, it will be at least difficult for me to have uh, to support uh, st a stadium with significant metro investment other than perhaps, you know, well, I won't get into that, but wh what the, that will, the metro investment will, um, will, I think, need to be closely examined. And if it's just Dollar straight out of the budget. If it's you know t you know taxes on top of the uh, tickets or concessions or that kind of thing, what is the ownership's team's I guess uh, thoughts as far as uh, their investment into building the stadium? So let me answer it real quickly, and then I'll turn it over to John. We're still working through those details, so I don't have those for you. But those are the parts that we know we need to come back to you and be able to answer that satisfactorily. And John, if you had anything else. Well, I would I would say that that um, that um, the expansion fee is not exactly a small amount of money. Um, the commitment to fund startup expenses, to potentially fund losses for years as as a team gets its footing um, together, are are real expenses um, and 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 could be a lot. Um, beyond that, I, I with with regard to the stadium, I mean, Mary Mary said we, we'll. We'll be back with 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 our commitment, and and it won't be a token commitment. Yeah. Councilman, if I might, yeah, if I might add that, I think what we 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 you know we don't we don't have those answers yet, and I, we're not hiding anything. No. I mean, I we we fine. we legitimately have not, you know, we we sort of are getting our arms around what the cost is going to be, how you might finance that, and then we're sort of looking at the pots that could be used to pay for this. But, um, a, a, you know, I, I don't want to, as I've said to them and, 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 and I'll say to you, um, you know, if, if, you know, if not picking on you, but I would say if, if, you know, if this is going to take X dollars out of what Councilman Elrod might get in sidewalks, he might have a problem with it. Is that fair? I thought I was fair to say it in that. And so we're, we're working through all that and trying to come up with a way that makes this a, really a win-win uh, for the city uh, and for the taxpayers as well, as well as for the team. This is important. Um, uh, you know, I think it's important for the city. I think it'd be a, you know, I, I think we, the mayor, we all feel this would be a great addition to the city, but it's got to be something that we, that, you know, we can feel pretty pretty good about going into, and that's what we're working on, and that's what we hope to have for you over the next 30 or 45 days. That's fine, and I just want to be clear. I'm not 
I'm not, uh, I guess, accusing y'all of hiding anything. These are just our first crack at this, so that's why I'm asking the questions. Because uh, I guess somewhat of a little bit of a speech here is I think it's great. I'm glad uh, Nashville is pursuing this. I want Nashville to win it. Um, but it's just like, you know, if you go in and buy a, a house, all the bells and whistles, they're all looking great on the drawing board, but what is it going to cost us? You know, that's coming down to what the nitty-gritty of it is. Um, so thank you. Council Lady Henderson. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I think uh, Councilman Davis and Councilman Elrod have mentioned a deadspin.com article, but it's actually based on a University of Michigan um, professor's book called Soccernomics. Um, you can get it on uh, Amazon for 960 today, so I've just ordered it. Um, and, and so I think that I'm, I'm not sure what his central thesis is there, but I think more so than responding to somewhat of an inflammatory article, um, it might be better just to respond to his thesis around the, the financial construct of um, uh, an MLS expansion, which I understand in 2005, you could secure a franchise for about $10 million, and now it's $150 million. So, um, you know, that's, that's interesting. So um, I wonder how many games are played at home in a typical season, because if we're looking at that comparatively, um, I know, you know, the Titans have very few home games, uh, but their financial model generates a lot of revenue from TV broadcasting. Um, you know, NHL has more, more home games than NFL does, but they're also in the Bridgestone Arena, which is one of the nation's most successful concert venues. So when you have a soccer-only venue, um, how many home games are you going to have, and kind of how do you make that math work, please? Um, I believe there would be in the neighborhood of 17 regular um, home games. And um, um, I, I don't know that at the end of the day that soccer is the only, the only programming that could happen there. It would hopefully be other, other things that, that we could do, but those are kind of being developed as, as we're working. Okay, so in your preliminary design, though, with ICON, I did not see any stage venue or anything otherwise. I mean, how would you kind of monetize that investment beyond the 17 home games? Uh, the current design actually contemplates a dual-use facility. Uh, so while the focus will be, in many respects, I referenced the lower bowl, for instance, and sight lines, um, to be soccer specific, that's true. But the functionality of it is a dual purpose um, facility. What we didn't show tonight is uh, a lot of the different spaces that are included in the, what we call the program, which shows you the content uh, of the stadium. And all of that is being designed to accommodate multiple different events, uh, including um, a stage that's going to be, that we're looking at right now, that can be portable to accommodate uh, different types of concerts, which I think is something that John alluded to a little bit earlier. So those things are being looked at now in the design at the early stage to make sure they get captured for that purpose. Thank you. Councilman Withers. Thank you so much, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, I don't sort of want to keep repeating some of the questions that some of my colleagues have raised, but, you know, again, um, the opinion piece in the Nashville Business Journal this morning uh, suggested that, you know, an, an ask of public dollars for a stadium would be a big ask, uh, and I would just remind everyone that we are in early stages of communicating with constituents about a ballot and referendum initiative to see about uh, raising taxes to fund transit. So we, we have a lot of things going on uh, kind of simultaneously. And at, at this moment in time, this uh, the timeline for looking at council action seems a little bit aggressive. Um, it, it could certainly be a great plan. But I guess I just want to go on record as stating that I'm, I'm a little concerned that uh, we will be asked to make a decision fairly quickly without extensive opportunities for constituent feedback. Uh, I certainly value the vetting that the Fair Board does and that the Sports Authority does, um, but those uh, hearing processes are, are valuable, but they are not extensive public hearings either. So I just kind of want to caution everyone that if such a major decision is being asked of, of me as a council member, I'm going to need to have a lot of information as soon as you can get it to me. 
and I'm going to need to have plenty of opportunities to ask my constituents about it so that they can help me make an informed decision. Thank you. Councilman Cooper. Um, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, three quick questions. Um, the first one, just to confirm that what's being contemplated here is a city-owned stadium paid for by revenue bonds with a metro guarantee, and the bonds are paid for by a long-term lease with the soccer team. And so both the st new stadium bond issuance and the lease would be approved by the council in the October, November, December timeframe? I don't, that's, I don't, you heard some of that, but you didn't hear all of that. Okay. So what, <laughs> what is it that I, I think will the, show up in October? I think whatever the council, the city would have to approve will come to the council in October. Uh, the lease is typically with the sports authority, not with the council. Uh, that's what First Tennessee Park was done that way. Uh, I think that before any debt could be issued by the sports authority, uh, that has to be approved by the council, and that's probably what would come before the council uh, in October, would be authorization for the sports authority to issue debt uh, to help finance a um, city-owned soccer facility at the fairgrounds, city-owned stadium at the fairgrounds, uh, subject to uh, certain conditions being met. So what would come up is just the issuance of the bonds and and not the this council would not be privy to the lease which would uh, finance the bonds or determine the city's exposure. I'm not saying we'd be privy to it. I mean, I, the lease is not done yet. If we have it done, we would obviously present it to the council. Uh, the key is having a financing plan uh, that the council would authorize the sports authority to issue the debt for. Wouldn't we need to also see the potential revenue? Well, I think, yes, clearly we're not going to ask you to approve something without showing you the revenue that would be presented that would be utilized to pay for the facility. That will all be part of the financing plan that would be presented to the council along with the, to the fair board and the sports authority. Yes, sir. All right. Second question. Are there any other improvements contemplated on the site other than the stadium? At the fairground site? Yes. There, there are other improvements. Yes. And that plan oh. will be presented at the same time. So you have more detail on that when you're asked to present to approve anything uh, for on the facade, on the soccer facility, you'll also be, informed and, and told about what improvements we would propose to be made at the fairgrounds property. And those other improvements would also be paid for by revenue bonds? No, those would be, those are city obligation. That would be general obligation debt in all likelihood. Oh, so a revenue bond for the stadium and a general obligation bond for the other improvements? Well, that's how we would finance all city, most so it, city improvements. It would be city capital improvements on the site? Yes, as we started that process last year, I believe it was, with a $12 million request that the council approved for improvements to the fairground, as well as uh, some money for uh, to do the park in front on the fairgrounds property. So the same method. But there would be two separate, in effect, financings on the site. I would envision that, yes, sir. Okay, two separate financings. And the third question is, is the thought then just that the state fair would be moved to another location? I think that that is a decision that's being made uh, outside of uh, our, 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 uh, our uh, the state fair board has, has voted about authorizing the move to other locations, yes, and but that's outside our domain. Other, uh, as long as they want to stay at that property, we would con ac accommodate but, them. But the stadium would displace that site. That's where it's uh, located on the fairgrounds? In part, yes. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Price. Councilman Schulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, number of seats proposed in this stadium? I know you're talking about 22,000 average attendance, but how many seats are you talking about? I, somewhere. I was say, the current design has approximately 30,000 seats. 30,000, okay. Uh, would it change in case if Vanderbilt football decided to go there as well? Could you accommodate more? It could, it could accommodate a few more. We've looked at various ranges, maybe up to 35,000 or so. All right, and uh, parking? Trying to figure out where everybody was going to park. Do you, have you all looked at that? Adam. There are there are a number of sites on there are a number of parking spaces available on the site currently, Councilman, and I would envision that um, uh, you might. Uh, you, I don't know if you recognize this. When we did the uh, when we're doing the uh, the, the park, uh, it's being designed so that cars can park on that on that turf. 
uh, uh, for like flea market was being designed originally for like flea market weekends when there's an overflow need for parking. Uh, so there are uh, a number of parking spaces available currently on the site. Uh, and I would also add that, um, you know, one of the attractiveness of this project uh, is that it's, um, it, it is right on Oldsville Road, uh, and we would envision a, a major transit stop uh, for, um, for what we hope to be um, our transit plan as well. So I think uh, we think there's adequate numbers for there. Okay, and, uh, and that would lead to the traffic question. Um, I know this is all pretty new, but um, have you all looked at traffic patterns in terms of Obviously, we don't have transit flowing right now. Um, maybe we have buses going back and forth. But in terms of trying to deal with that many people getting into that area, have you all looked at a traffic study? We have not at this stage yet. We're still early in the process. I think at one time there might have been some traffic studies conducted at the fairgrounds. I don't know how recent they are, but we'll, that's something that's on our list. Okay. I, I guess I'd go back to the Vanderbilt question. Um, Obviously, you're all still looking at it from a Vanderbilt perspective, up, down, what happens? Uh, are you all going to let us know? I mean, if it's a dual-purpose stadium besides the concerts, Vanderbilt football, what does that mean in terms of the overall proportion of the stadium? Number of seats, and I know you may not know that, but I'm just curious uh, if you're going to do dual functions. Have you all looked at it that far? Yeah, I think that certainly, as you said, that once those decisions are made, if Vanderbilt will be playing in there, we would envision this, the seating being between 33 and 35,000. And if not, I think, as Mary said, it would be closer to 30,000. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, and thank you all for being here. And obviously, this is the sits, the fairground sits in the district that I represent. Um, and there was a question, there were a couple questions from my colleagues um, about regarding community involvement, community um, engagement. And I know that. I, I don't think any of this comes really as a surprise to those who've been looking at this, and there are actually a couple of community members who are on the MLS to Nashville committee. Um, just th talking about timeline, um, how do you envision, I was actually just texting with the leader of the neighborhood organization in Wedgwood Houston about timeline, about when, what would you expect kind of to first engage with the community, and what do you envision that looking like through the, through the process as it goes through the different commissions and comes to us? Our initial expectation is we wanted to make sure that that you guys were the first ones that heard what we had to say tonight and saw the initial pictures. As we're working with various members of our committee, um, I know folks have already started to reach out and they'll begin to find out when, either if there's already some regularly scheduled meetings that we can send representatives to share information or we'll work with them to find the right time so that we can gather that important feedback. Council Lady Karen Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, this is an exciting project for our city. Um, just overwhelmed with excitement to see uh, what you all have proposed today initially as a start. Um, I think the only question I had was the infrastructure around. Um, I'm similarly like uh, Councilman and Lawrence Schulman. Um, is there a plan? Uh, to improve the infrastructure around that area. I know that you said it's going to be a 22,000 average attendance. Um, what is the average attendance now with the, fair, uh, with the state fair there? Is it around that amount? I'm not sure if it's comparable. Councilor, I, I don't know that information, but I, I hear what the concerns are, and I think that's clearly... Uh, some traffic and and part and you know we can easily not easily I can't do it I shouldn't say easily I don't know how to do it but we can get a, some traffic information and and a study to make sure that you know we're not going down uh, a bad path all indications from public works and others that we've talked to is that the infrastructure is available on site uh, so there shouldn't be any significant needs other than the you know the, the site site work that has to be done um, so um, you know with close proximity to two interstates we think it has uh, we think, we don't know, but we will find out um, some of that information that Councilman Shulman and you've raised, and we'll, we'll have more data for you that as we move forward in this process. But they're good questions. Thank you. I, I like the fact that the site is fully maximized and keeps the racetrack. That was just very important to many in our city. Um, and I'm just, I want to make sure the deal is right. 
And so uh, I'll be looking at these details, but I do want to tell you I'm looking at them with excitement. So I appreciate all of your work with this project for our city. Thank you. No one else is seeking recognition. Um, so I'll consider that the, the end of, of the presentation. Mr. Ingram, I would ask one uh, thing of you. If you would designate um, someone on your team that could be a liaison to the council, as I, they'll be going through a series of meetings in their communities, and uh, each district is probably going to have a different way they want to learn about this. So if you could just designate somebody that could work with the council to get the information out to our, our citizens, we'd appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, council members, for attending. And all those members of the public, thanks for coming downtown. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.